As we look into the fourth quarter, what are likely to be the events that uh, could lead the markets? Russ Mould, Investment Director at AJ Bell, joins us now with some more analysis. Russ, welcome. Okay. Um, let's take a look first of all at politics, because yes. I guess this is almost certainly going to be the big event of the fourth quarter of the US election. Yeah. Um, how much of a market event is that likely to be? It's potentially enormous, because if you look at history, and I admit it's, it's no guarantee, you know, the past is no guarantee for the future, the US market benchmarked by the Dow always does well in its first year under a Democrat president and always does badly in its first year under a Republican president. Now, Trump's got policies that frankly don't really bear too much resemblance to Republican or Democrat. Mrs. Clinton's been a bit vague on what she wants to do. But in terms of the result, it is potentially a very market moving event and potentially a source of volatility, yes. What else on the political scene could there be that might um, stir investors either one way or the other? Well, I think the big one actually that's sort of gone under the radar a little bit is the Italicum referendum in Italy, where Matteo Renzi, the Prime Minister, is trying to push through constitutional reforms to create, he would argue, political stability by changing the rules on how parties win seats in Parliament, but he's slightly regrettably made it a referendum on himself personally, which sets a bit of a big target on his back for anybody who's unhappy with the current economic situation in Italy. If he gets the bullet and the Movimento Cinque Stelle or the Five Star Movement gets in, that from a European perspective is an existential crisis because MS, the, the, the Five Star Movement are anti-Europe and if the pre-Europhile Renzi goes, that could really cause ripples. This is the move into popularist uh, uh, politics, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it's a big scene for today for 2017 with Marine Le Pen in France, Geert Wilders in the Netherlands, the Alternative für Deutschland, all lurking in the wings, waiting for those big ballots in 2017. What about the economic events to, to watch out for? Okay, we've got two more Fed meetings, two more BOJ meetings, two more Bank of England meetings for starters. There's going to be an awful lot of attention there, but also what you want to be looking at are the major indicators. Yes, employment is important, but it's lagging. Let's look at the concurrent indicators, retail sales, durable goods, industrial production, and most importantly, those forward-looking sentiment indicator surveys, which in the US have rolled over, the UK have bounced, and Europe have begun to flatline at 12 to 18 month lows. They're gonna be very, very important, and don't underestimate them, because you know, certainly look at the US, for example, where the ISM manufacturing in index right now is, is right now, and it makes analyst est earnings estimates for the second half of the year and going forward look a bit optimistic, truth be told. Yes, um, in terms of earnings, you've got uh, the US yeah, earnings season starting, absolutely. I think, in the first full week yeah. of, of October. Um, what about earnings on both sides of the Atlantic and also uh, from Asia as well? Well, yeah. What are the main features to watch I mean, I think, intriguing in the UK, I've been very sad. I've just sat and crunched my FTSE 100 model and gone through all 100 companies, put in all the numbers, aggregated them, and bottom up, we've seen the first forecast increases for the FTSE 100 for a couple of years. Why? Dollar, overseas earnings, miners and oils. So that is helping the FTSE 100 actually look like the least dirty shirt in the laundry in some ways because there's actually positive earnings momentum. The US, there's huge increases expected, but you've actually seen declines for the last three or four quarters in a row. You need to see the US start to show its momentum. The dollar stopped going up, which has definitely been a help. And in Europe, you're a little bit betwixt and between, but overall momentum there is improving but very, very slowly. Is there anything you think that could come in left of field which we haven't yet seen? Constantly. And I think the big, the, I mean, in the end, we've seen equities and bonds become incredibly correlated over the summer. People have worried about central banks pulling back, does that, and bond yields have stepped up, have gone up as a meantime, and bond prices have gone down. And that did affect equities. And you can make equities look very, very cheap on a yield basis relative to bonds. On an earnings basis, a market capture GDP basis, Equities are okay to slightly expensive. On relative to bonds, they're dead cheap. So what you don't want to see is the bond vigilantes say, "Excuse me, Mr. Central Bank or Miss Central Bank, you're overdoing it. We think inflation is going to gallop away on a three to five year view. We're going to hammer the bond market because I think that is the thing that would come out of left field and frighten a lot of people and create the volatility that we've really not seen except for a few days around June since February, since January, February when things were very bouncy." Since then, everybody's been kind of drugged with cheap central bank money, really. What, what, is, what does that do to the likes of pension holders who want to see uh, gradual increases? I mean, we've, we've, pensions have got the headlines for all the wrong reasons recently. Yeah, I mean, clear, in the end, it would help banks, pension funds, insurance companies, if you started to see bond yields go up in some ways because it increases the yields that they're getting. So you can see the benefit of that. Um, they're the probably the most likely, the sectors that would be least, least hit or possibly do best in that sort of scenario, but lots of other companies would find it, lots of other stocks or sectors would find it quite challenging, I think. But if that did happen, what, the central banks just turned the taps on again? That would, honestly, I genuinely think that would be my suspicion. Per, certainly if that then forces, say bonds sell off and that drives equities down 10 to 20%. If you look at QE2, Operation Twist and QE3 in the States, they came after equity and bond market sell-offs. I mean, nobody's forecasting it, and I know you're gonna lock me up as a lunatic for saying it, 
in that scenario, I could see the Fed going with QE4 rather than actually starting to hike interest rates next year in that particular scenario. OK, we'll see what happens in the fourth quarter. Russ, Pleasure. thanks indeed there for joining us. Russ Mould, Investment Director at AJ Bell.